Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. We honor you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Strength, strength like no. 
give the Lord a hand clap praise. If you know that the blood will never lose its power, can you give God a hallelujah praise today? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. For it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. Hallelujah. And I know that I know that I know that it never loses its power. Never loses its power. Can we give the Lord a hand clap praise this morning? Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Well, we bring you greetings. Hallelujah. In the precious name of Jesus Christ from the Community Refuge Church here in Manalapin, New Jersey. Hallelujah. Under the leadership of our apostle Fred Rubin, First Lady Teresa Rubin, and our assistant pastor, Elder Barry Williams. Hallelujah. Is there a praise in the house today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise in my heart. Praise on my lips. Because God has been gooder than good. He's been better than better. And we praise God for all things in the name of the Lord. Are you ready? Are you ready to give God some praise up in here today? Has he been good to you today? Has he been good to you all week long that you've made it to another Sunday? Has he been good? Then you ought to show some sign. We're going to praise God this morning. Amen for all things in the name of the Lord. All right. It's time while you're standing. Yes, everyone to stand. We're going to ask our elder uh, Nicholson to come. And he's going to lead us in prayer this morning. So whatever you want the Lord to do, put it on your mind right now. Trust and believe that God will take care of you. Let's receive our elder Nicholson with a hearty amen in Jesus' name. We bless the Lord this morning for being here. Amen. And we ask everyone to just draw your mind, amen, from where it, amen, you intend to do before you came. Let us just come just to worship him this morning. I don't know about you, but I didn't come to see what you had on or how you look this morning. But I come to give him praises. Oh, God. I come to give him praise this morning. Because he is good. Amen. I said he is good. <laughs> One said he's good and then good. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Shall we look to him? Eternal God, our Savior, in the name of your Son, Jesus, God, we count it an honor, we count it a privilege just to be in the house one more time, one more time you allowed us to come together. Oh God, just to give you thanks and to give you praise and to honor you this morning. Because God, you deserve it. You deserve it. Despite how we feel, you still deserve it, oh God. God, I bless you this morning. Oh, God. God, there was a time when one came before the king unannounced. They could be killed, oh, God. But look what you have done, oh, God. Look 
look what you have done. You have made it possible that we can come boldly before the throne of grace this morning. And Lord, as we come this morning, Lord, these are your son. These are your daughters. Lord, I don't, I don't know what they need, oh God. But you being the God that you are, you promise, oh God, you promise, you promise to meet every need that your children, oh God, desire, oh God. Lord, you, as a, as a scripture, let us know. We don't know what we should pray for. We think we know, oh God. But the spirit man that within us, God, it knows exactly what we saying, oh God. It knows, oh God. It knows how to minister unto us, oh God. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, meet every need, every need, according to your riches in glory, God. Lord, don't forget this morning that mother, oh God, who's struggling, oh God. Oh God, don't forget, oh God, that father, oh God, who is struggling this morning. Lord, you know their struggle, oh God. Their struggle might not be my struggle, but they're struggling this morning. Yes, thank you. And God, you use them, use them. you this morning, oh God. God, I praise you, oh God. What you going to do this day, oh God? For one said, this is the day that the Lord has made. We going to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for your healing power, for your deliverance this morning. In the name of Jesus, and Lord Jesus, bless us this day. As only as you can, oh God. And Lord, I, we won't fail to praise you in Jesus' name. And I say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you, says lift him up hallelujah oh how to reach the masses men of every birth for an answer jesus gave the peace he said if i if i be lifted up from the earth i brought all men unto me oh lift him up
Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your Savior. Hallelujah. There's a song that says, Hallelujah. Oh, are we in the right key, Courtney? We in F sharp. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, how I love Jesus. Singing, oh, how I love Jesus. Singing, oh. Thank you, Jesus. And the song says, He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. And oh, how He loves us. And oh, how He loves. Hallelujah.
Lord. And oh, how he loves. Hallelujah. Oh, and I know I'm glad he loves. Yes, he does. Oh. Singing, oh, how he loves. Hallelujah. Singing, oh, how he loves. How he loves. Hallelujah. Oh, and I know that he loves. Yes, he does. And oh, how he loves. Hallelujah. Oh, how he loves. And oh, how he loves us. Yes, Lord. And oh, And he loves us singing oh and oh how how he loves hallelujah and singing oh oh how he loves us hallelujah oh and oh how hallelujah he loves hallelujah oh I know Jesus loves me and he loves hallelujah and oh Hallelujah. And oh, how he loves us. Hallelujah. And oh, how, how he loves. Hallelujah. 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 And it says, and the king of glory fill this place. I just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Oh, I just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. King of glory and king of glory. Hallelujah. Fill this, this place. I just want to be with you. Yes, Lord. Yes, I. Yes, I do. I just want to be Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. I do, and oh, I just want to be with you, hallelujah, oh, King of glory, King, King of glory, hallelujah, fill this place, hallelujah, oh, I want to be with you, oh, I want to be, hallelujah, yes, Lord, oh, I just want to be with you, yes, Lord, and I want to be, I just want to be with you, hallelujah, hallelujah, song says, and we'll sing hallelujah until you come again, come on, y'all, hallelujah, oh, and we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Sing hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Sing hallelujah. We'll sing hallelujah. Oh, yes. Until you come again. Hallelujah. And we will dance in your presence. And we will, will dance in your presence. Until you come again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we will dance in your presence until you come again. Hallelujah. Oh, we will sing hallelujah. We will sing hallelujah until you come again. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We will dance in your presence. We will dance in your presence until you come again. King of glory, King of glory, King of glory. Fill this place. Fill. Hallelujah. I just want to be. I just want to be with you, hallelujah. I just want to be, just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep on playing, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to be with you, oh, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm living to live again. Hallelujah. Get to heaven. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. Hallelujah. Fill this place, oh God. Hallelujah. Touch me, oh Lord, right now. Hallelujah. I need to feel your presence, oh Lord. I need to know that you are near. Hallelujah. I need to feel you right now, oh God. Hallelujah. Touch me in the name. Oh God. Hallelujah. Fill me, oh God. Hallelujah. Allow my cup to overflow, hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah, speak to me, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God, I just want to be with you, not anyone else. Hallelujah, I want to be with you, oh God, hallelujah. King of glory, fill this place. Fill this place, oh God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, fill this place, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh God, let's give him a praise, Lord. Give him a praise, hallelujah. Give him a praise. Hallelujah, because he is worthy, oh Lord. Hallelujah, he is worthy. He is worthy, he is worthy. Hallelujah. Bless your Savior. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise, oh God. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. We thank you right now, oh Lord. Hallelujah. For every miracle, for every way made in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God. Oh Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way. Come into the midst of your people, oh God, right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Destroy the yoke in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way, hallelujah. Set free and deliver in the name of Jesus. Oh God, have your way, Lord. Save someone right now. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Fill this place, oh God. Hallelujah. Fill my heart, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And help us, oh God. Help us, oh Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap praise. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. He is the king of the glory. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Can we shout hallelujah? Glory be to God. We thank God for his presence and we thank God for his loving kindness. At this time, we're going to have our scripture reading coming from Proverbs. Amen. And we're going to be reading of our sister Bullock. Let's receive her with a hearty amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. If everyone can stand, please stand for the reading of the word. Proverbs 16, 1 through 3, 7 through 9. King James Version, and it reads, The preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. 
Oh, hallelujah. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his step. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. May the Lord directeth my path. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Oh, right. House is getting full. Good to see everyone and every here in the, uh, in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord to all of you online. I will be in front of you very briefly for this morning's announcements. Tuesday, Tuesday evening is our hour fellowship, everyone knows, at 7 p.m. on Zoom and Facebook Live. Um, this week, our instructor will be Bishop Fields. Bishop Fields will be teaching on the topic of saints in strange places. Saints in strange places. 7 p.m. this Tuesday, please join us for the hour of fellowship. Again, the topic that Bishop Fields will be teaching on is saints in strange places. Next Sunday, next Sunday, we will continue with our usual schedule. Our, the education hour, sorry, uh, will be at 1030 as usual on Zoom. And our instructor for next Sunday is our Sister Marie Prophet. All right, all right, yay. So Sister Prophet will be our instructor next Sunday. Please join us for the education hour at 1030, followed by our worship service at 1130 um, on Facebook Live, Zoom, and on YouTube. Amen? Ladies, reminder, if you have not yet signed up, today's the last day. Sign up sheet, we have next Sunday, immediately following service, immediately following service, a Women's Prayer Board Fellowship, next Sunday, next Sunday. So please, if you have not done so already, please sign up. It's important that we know who will be attending because there will be food served, and so we want to make sure we have enough for everyone. So again, that's next Sunday, immediately after service, Women's Prayer Board Fellowship. Um, again, sign up sheet, last day to sign up is today so if you have not done so please do so we, uh, we hope everyone that can will be able to join us next Sunday um, also also uh, as Bishop has charged for us this year the vision for this year is a year of prayer year of prayer amen and along with that theme um, we will be converting our board in the vestibule to a prayer board, a corporate prayer board, so the community refuge corporate prayer board. And also at the welcome desk are prayer cards. So if you have prayers that you want to be posted on that board, please see um, Sister Lampley at the welcome desk and obtain a, a prayer card, we'll fill out the card, and our finance department will be sure to post your prayers on the community board by the first Sunday in February. So Sunday, February 5th, the individual prayer cards will be posted. Um, you can continue if you have additional prayers that you want to add to the to the board, that you'll be able to do so afterwards as well, but be sure to provide that uh, prayer card to Sister Lampley at the desk, welcome desk, and our finance department will be sure to have that um, your prayer cards added to our corporate prayer board, amen? Amen, amen. Uh, one additional announcement also from our finance team. If you have not yet um, or you want to receive a copy of your tax statement, uh, that will be available the first, also the first Sunday of February. Um, but we do need to know if any of you would like to receive a copy and how you'd like to receive that. Do you want a physical copy or do you want a copy emailed to you? If you do want a statement, there's also another list. There's plenty of lists at the welcome desk. Um, another list for your tax statements. Please sign up. And if you want it by email, please provide your email address. And we ask please write legibly so um, our finance team can be sure to um, put your names in accurately and the information in accurately and send you your statement if you do want it by email. Uh, amen. I think that is it for announcements. We are a church that what? Believes in the power 
wonder working, miracle working power of prayer. Amen. And we have a list. We have a list of, of folks that we do want to lift up special prayers for. Our list is posted on our Facebook page. Um, please, please send up special prayers for those on our list as we continue to pray one for another. Amen. Amen. I believe I am now done with announcements. Praise the Lord. And we now welcome up, please, our Assistant Pastor Elder Barry Williams for words of encouragement. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, what I want to do, I want some living, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, activated folk to just jump on your feet and just give God a praise. Now, now I want you to make it personal. I want you to make it. Thank you. Make it personal. Now, can you just raise your hands? I just want to. I, I just want to see you with your hands raised. Oh, hallelujah! I just wanted to see you. Hallelujah! 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 You may be seated. I'm getting rid of all discouragement. And I'm receiving all encouragement. Whatever I see that's trying to discourage me, I'm going to turn it around. Did, did y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm going to turn it around. In other words, I'm going to say no. No, I'm not going to receive you. I'm going to be encouraged. I'm going to look for the light. Hallelujah. In everything. Hallelujah, so that I can see the victory and see the glory of the Lord. I don't know if y'all remember, but I began to talk about what the Lord showed me, that there would be glory in the earth, glory in the earth. And today I feel that, that God is getting ready to shower down some glory. That means that there's got to be some lifted hands and that vessel that is waiting to receive the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I saw it as bodies being filled. Not, not initially filled. Not the initial. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Not the initial filling of the Holy Spirit. That's not what I'm talking about. But I saw bodies Hallelujah, that belong to God being filled with his spirit, meaning that you, you've been baptized, but, but you're not at that level, but you're going to be filled up with the spirit and controlled by the spirit. When I saw that, I saw bodies healed. I saw bodies delivered. I saw yokes being broken in the spirit because that's what God wants for his people and we sometimes we are going along with the enemy sometimes we're walking with the enemy as he's talking and dictating to us about how my day is going and you are agreeing with the enemy Hallelujah. And I come to tell you this morning, don't agree with the enemy. You got to call him a liar in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when you feel like you're not victorious, you got to tell the devil you're a liar because God made me victorious. When you feel like you're out of strength and you don't have what you're, you're looking for, you got to know that God promised you and tell him you're a liar. I got the victory. I have the strength. I got the mind. Hallelujah. And I'm just waiting for God to fill me. Somebody say, fill me. Hallelujah. Say, fill me. Hallelujah. When he fill you, he going to heal you. He's going to bless you. He's going to open up doors for you. Hallelujah. Yeah. I feel it coming, saints of God. I don't know why I'm saying it, but I feel like God wants to do more than what we're looking for him to do. Hallelujah. I believe we got to raise up. Hallelujah. That expectation so that God can have his way in our lives. I believe God wants to do the impossible. Anybody believe that? 
Hallelujah. And I begin to see different ones. I begin to see different families being blessed. Hallelujah. You know y'all are blessed. Hallelujah. You're not just waiting on a blessing. You are blessed right now. Hallelujah. You're blessed in the valley. Hallelujah. You're blessed in the struggle. You are blessed with your troubles. You are blessed because God is with you. Hallelujah. So I come to encourage you today. Hallelujah. That you can freely wave your hand. Do y'all hear what I said? Somebody need to be jumping up right now because, yeah, just because nobody else jumping up, you need to be jumping up. You need to be giving something into the atmosphere. Hallelujah, because your God is getting ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to manifest. We're praying and we're going to see. I want you to tell somebody, I want you to tell two or three people that I'm getting ready to see it. Ah, y'all. Hallelujah. 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 I'm getting ready to see the miracle. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to experience the miracle. Can anybody shout with me? Hallelujah. Is anybody got a shout at you? Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 God is getting ready to shower glory in the earth. I, I heard it. I know what I heard. It. He said glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory is when God is glorified. And he can't be glorified if he don't do nothing. He can't be glorified if he don't say nothing. He can't be glorified if you don't get nothing. If you don't receive nothing, then God can't be glorified. He's glorified in what he does. And it's coming. Somebody say, it's coming in the earth. the spirit all over me it's in my head it's in my feet it's in my soul it's all over me hallelujah 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 I thank him I thank him I thank him I thank him today I thank him today I want to sing every time he start coming up here that means for me to sit down so, but all I want to tell you is Jesus is all to me. me. He gives me strength from day to day. 
He's the true lover of our soul. He comes and see about us. All he wants us to do is to love him back, to serve him, oh, to adore him, to bless him day and night, night and day. Jesus is all the world to me. On Facebook, they ask the question, do you love Jesus? They keep asking it over and over again. How do you feel about Jesus? And how do you feel about God? And I said, Jesus is all the world. He's my everything. He's my everything. He's my everything. And he wants to be your everything. And when we get connected to him like that, he starts being our everything. He fills us up till we overflow. Love on Lord, on the Lord. Please, love on the Lord. He's soon to come. He's trying to get us ready to get up out of here. And I sure want to go back with him. Oh, you might as well keep praising the Lord. Lord walking around right now, telling somebody I came to bless. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just honor the Lord Jesus Christ today. Praise the Lord. We had a beautiful education hour. Uh, we're starting to go back to normal. There was a good 12, 13, 14 people in house. And Elder Tucker taught an excellent message, uh, first in a series dealing with the book of Revelation. And here we are in God's house, feeling the presence and the anointing of the Lord. I tell you, it's good to work with praying people, folks that love God because they make my job so much easier. When folks around you are praying, folks around you are fasting, folks around you are seeking the blessings of the Lord. I tell you, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Well, I, I need to recruit some folks. I need some help. I went to a funeral service yesterday, a young man. Uh, I think he was going to be 25 February the 5th. And I looked out and saw all these young folks. He didn't die a natural death. It was more of a street death. I saw all these young men, young women that know so little about God. Their parents didn't live for the Lord, didn't teach them about God. I suppose the grandparents didn't teach the parents. But whatever, they're not only, not only with the promise of eternal life, their life here on planet Earth is counterproductive to any good thing. Nice people. Nice people, but caught up by the power of darkness. So I'm looking for some volunteers to go into a prayer war with me. I'm asking the Lord, how do we reach these young men and young women? The things we're doing doesn't seem to be getting the job done. So I'm asking the Lord, what must we do? We're going to ask him to touch hearts and minds, but there's an answer that he's going to give us, what we must be doing to be a help to them. We've been fasting throughout the month, and I can feel the presence of the Lord, but I want to continue with an ongoing fast from a different perspective. I'm going to tell you what I plan to do, and as the Lord leads you, you can join me or adjust to it. Starting this Wednesday for eight days, not the weekend, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the following five days, I committed myself to two meals, no snacks. I better repeat that. Breakfast, dinner, no snacks between, no snacks after the two meals. And I'm going to insert those that are diabetic. If you need a snack somewhere, again, as I often say, you can have a salad. You don't need a steak sandwich. Praise the Lord. You don't have to have a big old milkshake. You can have some juice. But I want us praying. 
I want us praying. I want us praying. I want us praying. I want us praying. I want us to ask God, what are we to do to reach these young men and young women? And when you talk to them, they're pleasant to talk to. I've eulogized a number of these young men and young women, uh, more of the young men, and the gangs were there. And when you talk to the individual gang member, polite, present, cordial, but they're caught up in a system that has them bound. Caught up in a system that has them off in a direction that means them no good and those around them no good. Can I find some prayer partners? Praise the Lord. Even if you don't fast with me, I want you praying with me. I'm going to, why do you want to make this sacrifice? Well, fasting is a physical suffering to get a spiritual gain. And there's a variety of ways that you can fast. But I know it's going to be a suffering for me to have no snacks, no chunky bars. I'm getting upset even as I say it. But, but two meals, two meals, two meals. I can see myself having my protein shake in the morning and then having a good dinner that Lady Reuben has prepared, but no snacks between and no snacks after. With my mind on what? Asking the Lord. I picked the number eight because it's a number of a new beginning. And I want the Lord to, I was listening to Elder, going to a higher place. God has a place for this congregation to play. It's a higher place. It's a new place. It's a greater place. Moving the ministry from out of these walls into the streets. You know, in Freehold, they know me. Uh, I have a street name in Freehold. It's called Bishop. And they know just to they're talking about when they say bishop. But I want the church, through your prayers and through your efforts and through your commitment, not just in the freehold community, but wherever you live, wherever you live, we need to extend our ministry. We can't let folks just live and die and go to hell. Can't let folks, praise the Lord, just live in a way that's counterproductive. And to be honest, we have folks in our own families. Everybody ought to say amen to that. Folks in our own family going down that same path. If not our natural family, folks that are close to us. I have a young man that I've been mentoring for 30 years. Got himself into some kind of dilemma. Praise the Lord. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying for him. Looking for God to do something wonderful. I also said, I'm going to do this. I multiplied the eight times eight. Anybody good in math? 64. Somewhere during the month of February, I'm going to give the Lord a new beginning offering of $64. Asking those within the congregation those of you that follow us, and some of you will fast with us, some of you will pray with us, and those that want to be a part of this new beginning offering, we certainly welcome you to do that. But the focus must be, tell somebody the focus must be, these young men and young women that need to know God and need a change in their lives. And I just believe that we focus like we're supposed to. I'm going to do the fasting, do the financial giving. But the focus must be these young men, these young women. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You, you see him here, you see him there. They're in our families, they're our friends. Somewhere back a couple generations ago, God became less important. And... Children were not taught 
goodness of the Lord. And even those families that taught their friends had a great influence upon them. And God became secondary. Praise the Lord. And even those in the church. You know, the church used to be on life. Praise the Lord. God used to control everything. It's not that way today. How many have some folks in your family need to be saved? Praise the Lord. If you don't, I need to talk to you to find out your secret. Because in every family, there's multitudes that need. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And you know what? The best way to kick off this prayer, come on and stand with me. Let's pray right now. And as we're praying, let's make a commitment. Now don't make a vow and break it but you can make a commitment Lord by your help by your help I'm praying for these young men and these young women by your help I'm praying that we as a congregation those individuals that watch us on Zoom and Facebook and YouTube we're going to make a commitment to make a difference in this world Father, in the name of your Son, thank you. In the name of your Son, we praise, we worship you. And as we think of these young men and young women that know you not, that even have no thoughts concerning you, we ask you to give us the direction on how to be a blessing to them. Speak to us and guide us and direct us in the name of Jesus. And as we come this day to worship, send your word, send your anointing, send your victory. And we'll praise you forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to start on Wednesday. I'm starting on Wednesday because Tuesday I'm having a procedure done. And so I uh, better start on Wednesday. Uh, just a routine. If I say it's an every five year routine, you might know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. One of the things that I'm going to be doing is going to the book of Nehemiah. I encourage you to read the first couple of chapters from Nehemiah while you're also reading the first three chapters of Revelation. And when Nehemiah heard about what was happening in Jerusalem, the scripture said he prayed certain days asking the Lord for direction. So that's going to be part of my daily reading as I ask God for direction. I want you praying and fasting with me. And any time during the month of February, you can bring that new beginning offering. And I'm so grateful to those of you that follow us on YouTube and Facebook and Zoom. You've been an encouragement to us, not only through your prayers, but your giving. Now, if you want to be a part of this new beginning, you can send that special offering, mark it down, the new beginning offering through our cash app online, mail, or, of course, in person. All right, Daniel, chapter 6, verse number 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. And his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. I'm using from my thought, and it's connected to what I just shared with you. Satan, watch out. I know how to pray. I enjoy worship service. I enjoy the education hour, the hour of fellowship. I enjoy 
when we come together to praise and to worship and to magnify. In fact, some of you need me to teach you how to shout. I have a special shout. Praise the Lord, it's an anointed shout. I need to have classes. I enjoy all that. I enjoy all that. I enjoy your fellowship. I enjoy shaking your hand and saying praise the Lord. And when I'm not too worried about this pandemic, prayerfully running its course, give you a little hug and say praise the Lord. But to ignore the fact that we're in a spiritual warfare is unwise. We cannot avoid the reality. You and I are in a warfare. We're fighting somebody that doesn't like us. And he has a host of demons. Praise the Lord, a host. He gathered one-third of the angels to join his force. And he doesn't play by any rules. He's out to get you, to kill, to steal, to destroy. And he'll use whatever methods he can he knows those things that you like that you shouldn't have. Go offer them to you. He knows those things that you're not supposed to have. Offers those. And then he threatens to take from you the things that God has for you. God wants you blessed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. God has given you joy unspeakable for the glory and Satan doesn't like that sometimes I think he stays up all night how can I get brother so and so sister so and so separated from God I'm tired of hearing them praising God and shouting the victory and he comes up with plans one of the sad things is that Satan is able to use people. Not just bad people, but people. When you look at some of the concerns in the scripture, you see words like envy and jealousy. Part of some of the things that Satan uses with good people to be a hindrance to other good people. And sometimes we look at ourselves as just being the victims. But if we're not careful, we're some of the folks that he uses to attack others. Yes, we're in a spiritual warfare. A warfare that's aimed to break our bond with God. To break our connection with God. He uses lies, uses experiences, he uses whatever he can. But when we recognize that we're in a warfare, it ought to tell us I've got to arm myself. I've got to put on the whole armor of God. I've got to understand what I possess that I can use effectively against this enemy. To be honest with you, the shout doesn't affect the enemy. Speaking in tongues doesn't stop him from coming after you. No matter how loud and how bold you say hallelujah, he's still coming. What weapons, what weapons, what weapons, what weapons do I possess? What weapons do I have that keeps me under control? You know, when we fast, we're not just fasting to impact somebody else. We fast to keep ourselves under control. We fast to get rid of the old garment so we can have a new garment where God can pour in the new wine. I want that higher place 
I want that glory to come upon each and every one of us. So we fast, we fast. We also have this thing called prayer. We testify we're a church that believes in the power of prayer. Praise the Lord, this place has been given over in word to be a place where men and women can feel the presence of God, the love of God, a place where praise takes place and a place also where prayers are made and lives are changed. When I looked at those young men and women I spoke about prior, Lord, what can we do? What is it that we're not doing? What is it that we must do? Again, I thought about Nehemiah. He prayed, Lord, you've got to show me. You've got to lead me because I can't look at the destruction and just stay the same way and make believe it's not there. I can't let it depress me. I can't let it take my joy. I'm referring to some of the things that elders said and say amen to him. But I just can't accept that all these young folks know nothing about Jesus. They come into a church and leave not really understanding what God has to offer. Anybody understand what God has to offer? You and I are going to say yes, but there's greater things that he has yet to show us. As I'm watching all these men, I'm getting somewhat, won't say depressed, but concerned. I was happy when the pastor, Pastor Doc, told them there is a heaven and there is a hell. I was happy when he told them, you just can't claim Jesus and live the same way you were living. Glad to hear that. But I kept this thought, what must we do? What must we do? What must we do? If we knew, I suppose we'd be doing it. So there's some things that we don't know, but God knows. Why don't you just say those two words, but God, three words, but God knows. Yeah, I can count. One, two, three. So I came home, and the Lord led me to this portion of Scripture. The story about Daniel. And the devil was out to get Daniel. And he used the men that were evil. And he used the king that got caught up, didn't mean to be evil. He knew, they knew, that Daniel was a praying man. Three times a day, he went into his house, opened up the windows and faced Jerusalem. He was in captivity in Babylon. He wanted to face Jerusalem. And he prayed unto his God. Every time he prayed, nobody had to hit the right note. Nobody had to say the right words. Every time he prayed, he gave thanks. What causes somebody to give thanks when they pray? When you enter into the presence of God, when you come near God, you start feeling something, don't you? You might start a prayer just doubtful, unconcerned, or whatever. But when you get into the presence of God and feel his touch, you've got to lift your voice. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. You can come with problems, dilemmas. You can come with challenges and, and all kinds of negative thinking things. But when you touch God, you feel like the woman that had the issue of blood. When she touched the hem of his garment, she felt the virtue. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Feeling that virtue that might not have yet changed the circumstances, 
but it changes your spirit to let you know God is concerned about my situation. And if God's concerned, I can sense victory. If God's concerned, I know something good is about to happen. Daniel, three days, every day, three times a day, every day. And because they were jealous of Daniel, you jealous of anybody? You don't need to be. God has made you the way he wants to make you. And all you need to do is keep being the person God wants you to be. And God will bless you in a miraculous way. You don't need a title. You don't need a position. You don't need even other folks to say good things about you. When God, I heard the scripture this morning, when a man's way please God, he'll make even his enemies to be at peace with you. But they're out to get Daniel because they were jealous. Every time the king needed somebody, where's Daniel? Every time the king wanted to use somebody, where's Daniel? And if he didn't call for Daniel, it was for Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, his sidekicks. And they didn't like that. Some folks are not happy that you're a child of God. Some folks are not happy that you know how to praise God and worship God and magnify God. Some folks are not happy because you testify, God been good to me. Oh, somebody testify right now. God been good to me. And then, because they're upset with you, they're going to attack you, attack one of your loved ones, going to attack somehow to get to you. In Daniel's case, they went to the king. King had a big ego. King wanted to be nice. And for 30 days, nobody could approach anybody but you for counsel, for advice. All these other nations are here under our captivity that they won't be able to call into their gods. For 30 days, Nebuchadnezzar, I need you to do something. Nebuchadnezzar, would you bless me? Nebuchadnezzar. Of course, Nebuchadnezzar didn't have any power anyhow. You know, folks pray to chairs. Folks pray to all kinds of stuff. Folks make gods. Now, that's not crazy. They make a god. and Put that thing that they made and pray to it. Anybody see any logic to that? When Lady Reuben bakes a good cake, now not for these special fast day, but when she makes this good cake, I don't pray to it, I eat it. <laughs> Why well, pray to something that you made? Oh, somebody just shout hallelujah. But it went to Nebuchadnezzar. That sounds like a good thing. They're going to talk to me. They're going to ask me. They're going to trust me. And the Bible says, when Daniel knew the writing was signed. Let me put that so it applies to you and I. Knowing now that the devil is out to get you. That he's trying to break you. Trying to separate you. Trying to, and if he can't do it by your hallelujah, you're going to try to get to your faith and overshadow it with doubt. Going to try to take your faith and pour doubt and fear all over it. It's going to paint pictures, negative pictures, unhappy pictures. And he's going to go to some of your loved ones, cause them to step aside from the reality of who God is and what you've been teaching them and instructing them and, and guiding them to know that God is. He's the one that every knee got to bow to. He's the one that every tongue got to confess to. He's Lord. 
Now, your response, how you deal with his attacks is essential. Now, the scripture tells us how Daniel responded. It says clearly, when Daniel knew, when Daniel knew that it was written, well, you say what's so important about that? Well, anybody that violated it, was going to be tossed into the lion's den. Anyone that didn't do what the signature meant for them to do was going to cost them their life. Did you hear what I read when Daniel heard it? The Bible said he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled down upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks. You and I need to be able to tell Satan right now, Satan, watch out. Anybody going to say it with me? Satan, watch out. I know how to pray. You're coming at me from every which way, trying to get me to stop saying God is able. Trying to get me to say he's not going to bless. Trying to get me to look at these young men and young women and say they'll never be saved. But watch out, Satan. I know how to get a prayer to. I know how to get on my knees and cry out, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I know God is a prayer answering God. I had somebody call my line this morning and said, Apostle, would you pray for me? I'm having a migraine headache that I can't get rid of. And I said, let's pray. And we prayed in the name of Jesus. And after the 15 seconds of prayer, she said, wait a minute. The pain is God. It was God telling me, I hear your cry. And you and I ought to tell Satan, watch out, buddy. I'm going to pray like I never prayed before. And every time I pray, I'm going to say thank you. Because I know my God got his arms around me. He's going to protect me. And Daniel prayed. Now listen to this. God doesn't keep you from every storm. But in the storm, he wraps his arms around you and protects you. He doesn't keep you from every trial. But in the midst of your trial, he's there with you. They came and took Daniel, put him in the lion's den. Somebody is going in a lion's den. But keep praying, keep praising. Keep shouting, for God is with you. And they put him in that lion's den. And the king understood what he did. And he came outside of the lion's den. Said, Daniel, is your God able to keep you? Daniel, wave to him. Don't worry, kid. The same God I testified yesterday about is the same God today. He was able then, and he's able right now. I'm telling somebody in your line there, keep the shouts, keep the praise, keep the testimony, and tell the devil you thought you had me. But back up, buddy. I know how to pray. And when I pray, a praise comes out. Can I get somebody in a storm right now to shout thank you? Can I get somebody that's in the midst of a storm to lift your voice and shout hallelujah? Saying, I see it. I see it coming. I see it coming. What do you see coming? I see a breakthrough. I see a victory. Call it the glory. That's all right. But God is getting ready. Getting ready. 
say it with me. Say it. Watch out. Back up. I know how to pray. And when you get done telling them that, open up your mouth and start praising. Start thanking. Start magnifying. Come on, saints. Let praise the Lord. Come on, saints. Let give them the glory. Come on, saints. Getting ready. You know who I want to pray for today? Those that are willing to accept the challenge of the new beginning. Get on your knees to limit your intake of food and tell that demon, watch out. I know how to pray. Come down here and let me anoint you. Pray with you. Oh, Hashem Mamashima. Lord, I say thank you. Lord, I say thank you. Come on, young man, you come first. <laughs> all right. Come on right here. Right here. I'm going to pray for you first, all right? Here's the first young man we're going to pray for. Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless this child. Jesus.
the glory, yes, all of the glory belongs to you. Yes, Lord. Oh, we sing all of the glory, yes, all of the glory belongs to you. Yes, Lord. Oh, we sing my hallelujah and my yes, Lord, belongs. Some money the other day and where better can I use it but to give it to the Lord my $64 plus what I normally give on a Sunday sometime over the next few weeks but remember the focus is these young men these young women they're in our families, they're in our communities, people that we love and care about. But we're going to tell Satan what? Watch out. I know how to pray. Whatever you have to give, come and just lay it at the altar. In the name of Jesus. Those online, we invite you to join us with our new beginning prayer fasting starting Wednesday two meals no snacks now this young man was the first young person I got to pray for Madison was the first young lady I got to pray for in the name of Jesus thank God for our honored guest today is sister Nora God for her. Make sure you get a chance to greet her before you leave today. Everybody standing. Father, in the name of your son, we thank you for the privilege of being in your house, for leading us, guiding us, speaking to us. We're entering into a new beginning. You're going to direct us how to be a blessing these young men and these young women in Jesus name Amen it belongs to you we sing all of the glory yes Lord and we sing